please welcome the Altoona Area High School Marching Band and Cheerleaders. We proudly present the 2021 Altoona Area High School Marching Band under the direction of drum maker Charlotte Boyle. The band will open this evening.
evening's festivities with the Alcuniary High School Band Fanfare and the School Fight Song. to stand and remove your headwear for the playing of our national anthem and remain standing for the Altoona Area High School alma mater.
And now, an Altoona Band tradition, the Downfield Lions perform to the band's signet march, Barnum and Bailey's favorite.
evening and welcome to Mansion Park. I'm Jim Abbott along with Chris Strawmeyer. We're here tonight to bring you Mountain Lion football. Tonight's game, the unbeaten Mountain Lions 2-0 against Alterdice from the Pittsburgh City League. Uh, Chris, what do we know about Alterdice here tonight coming to Mount Mansion Park? Well, we don't know a whole lot. Uh, they didn't play last week. Their game was canceled due to COVID. Uh, they're supposed to play a team out of West Virginia. Oak Glen, I think, is their name. Uh, but they lost uh, to Mor North Allegheny 47-14 the first week. It was a mercy rule game. Uh, lots of turnovers. Uh, North Allegheny had a short field quite a bit. Uh, but the positives out of, out of, uh, that Alderdice got out of that is they made, did make a few big plays here and there. Um, when they go off script, their athletic ability sometimes can really, really be a hazard. And the Mountain Lions have to, have to really pay attention to that. Do what they do. You know, Mountain Lions ought to do what they do. Take care of the football. Be smart. Um, possess the football and they should be you know I mean if we're if we were if we were handicapping this game you would say the Mountain Lions are a favorite tonight I would agree with you I believe the Mountain Lions are a favorite just looking at a couple of the players from Alter Dice um, they have a big defensive lineman George Benjamin he is six foot four or six foot five between 360 and 365 according to the coach he's a grizzly bear sized um, that, that's his nickname, Grizzly Bear, and it's hard for two people to stop him. He said he needs other people on defense to step up and help them. On offense, they are led by junior Jerome Parker. He threw for 99 yards the first night against North Allegheny, and they do have three or four all-city players back on that offensive line, uh, Micah Brown, uh, Deidre Wills, and uh, Robert Brown is the, the returning tight end. They are looking forward to next week. The winner of the next week's game between Alderdice and Westinghouse is basically, I don't want to say assured the city championship, but in their league, they're the top two teams, and they actually play the opening night um, of the Pittsburgh City League. So uh, we'll see what we have with uh, Alderdice as the game goes. Uh, let's take a quick look at Altoona. What do we have for some stats, Chris? Well, you know, Altoona is obviously led by their workhorse uh, running back Ethan Straup, he has 43 carries for 281 yards this year. Um, 200 yards last week uh, against Williamsport. He scored five TDs thus far. Um, uh, eight time Bugle quarterback. Now the Lions don't throw much, but you know when they do, uh, Stein Bugle looks for those short little quick hitters to get some of their athletes out in space. Uh, Ethan Heilman, Derek Tabor, and Andre Dokes, uh, Spriggs, uh, uh, Caleb Spriggs. They like to get those guys out there in a little bit of space and uh, try to let them make something happen. And, and I agree with you 100%. The one big thing that I liked last week besides just running it down uh, Williamsport's throat with Ethan, each one of those guys you just said, Spriggs, Dokes, Howman, Taborn, they all came up with one big 20-yard play or more that really helped Altoona move and take that lead in the fourth quarter and, and come up with a great win against Williamsport. Right. I mean, you can't just be one-dimensional, you know, pound the ball up the middle. You have to get the ball outside and do some things out there. And, and the Mountain Lions definitely took a advantage of that. Well, last week we had Toga Night from the student section. Tonight, everyone's dressed in red, white, and blue to commemorate the 20th anniversary of 9-11. Our captains for Altoona, Manny Miller, uh, Connor Reimer, Aiden Steinbugel, and Ethan Strout. So, uh, we have some honorary captains that are former Altoona students or um, alumni that have served with uh, the military. So we have uh, Bud Kyle. Thank you for your service. From World War II. But in general, all um, military service personnel uh, is, is what this game, game is dedicated to uh, for the Mountain Lions. Yeah, obviously, 20 years ago tomorrow is the 9-11 anniversary. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously it brings back a lot of emotions here for, for all of us that kind of went through that. And, and uh, it's kind of a special thing here to, to honor the military um, and, and our first responders. Um, in, a, in a weekend like this. Well, Altoona has won the toss and they've elected to receive. Um, I believe actually they've started on offense in all three games now. Um, they like to get the ball and get that offensive moving. 
Um, again, you know, we've talked about the skilled positions. We've talked about Straub and Steinbugel. We've got to look at the guys up front that really matter to the mountain lions. Again, you got uh, the, the, the front five. Uh, your center is, is Dylan Ocker. Your guards are Brian Yingling and Logan Klein. Then you have Manny Miller on, on the, the strong tackle. And you have Connor Reimer on the weak tackle. They will flip-flop from time to time. And then theoretically, your tight end is Chandler Brendel. Uh, but that position is sort of mixed between tight end and wing. And, you know, Altoona does a lot of movement in that backfield to try to uh, shake up the defense and get them out of the rhythm. So uh, Alderdice is set um, to kick off. Officials are just handing him the ball. Mountain Lions are meeting on the side before they go out. But again, we're back here again for Mountain Lion football on MLTV live on YouTube. Uh, I, again, would like to thank the students who put this production on. This is a complete student production, um, other than uh, Chris and I. Um, Mr. Sipes, Doug Sipes, is the advisor in charge of MLTV. And tonight, six of his students, Caleb Fries, Noah Fries, Gabe Ebersol, Brooke Long, Ben Shank, and Chris Fox are bringing you all of the pictures, all of the... Uh, the, the, the little things underneath telling you down, first down, second down, everything else. Um, they're getting the pictures. They're mixing the entire everything together. So we will start Andre with Andre Dokes Andre getting the ball Dukes. about the 12 and bringing out to the 28. Seven yard return. So the Mountain Lions have, have got the ball, as you said, the each each Johnson, game. And each time two. the opposing Andre defense has had a little bit of a struggle at the beginning trying to adjust to this unique offense. Not many teams run uh, this style of offense that the Naval Academy runs and uh, some, other, some other schools run it. But, um, you know, not too many high schools actually run it, to be honest with you. Um, it's well, Coach so Niedemeyer brought it with him from Rhode Island. Right. Um, this is what he learned and what he did uh, back in the late 90s when he was a, a, a college student and the main quarterback there. So Mountain Lions getting set. Snap, and it looks like a pass. It's a quick screen over the middle to Straup. He breaks the first tackle, gets to the outside, keeps going down the sideline, and steps out of bounds. He, oh, he stepped over two or three no different um, Aliquippa defenders trying to attack his legs. Yeah. Now, we associate him with this big bruising, or this bruising runner that runs people over in between the tackles on the inside. His footwork is tremendous right there. He dances to the side, eludes tackles. He's very elusive for a big guy. He's great feet, and uh, you'll see that quite a bit here tonight. So this time they get set in that wing, and it's a fake handoff. This time Steinbugel uh, takes the ball back, it's goes up the middle, and I believe he's going to go for a first down, and we'll give him exactly 10 yards. Devon, yeah, that's just that lead, that lead follow play or where he follows the, the, the up back. So Steinbugel's looking to the sideline for the play. Again, uh, looking down on the field from here, the big thing that again stands out uh, for Alderdice, the, the Dragons big uh, six foot five, 360 pound lineman, uh, uh, George Ben. Quick pass out to the outside and picked off. And Alderdice is going to go to the end zone. So the second pass was supposed to be a quick screen to the left. And number Terrell seven, James. Terrell James steps in front Terrell of the receiver, James. intercepts touchdown. it, and goes basically 49 yards for a touchdown. Yeah, those are the kinds of things that the Mountain Lions have not done all year thus far. Um, and, you know, mistakes do happen sometimes. And, uh, this is actually Aiden Steinbugel's third game at the high school level starting. So surprisingly enough, they have not put the ball in the air very much um, this year. They come out with a couple passes early, and, uh, and Alderdice takes advantage of it. So Terrell James steps in front of an Aiden Steinbugel pass, picks it off, and goes 49 yards for a touchdown. And the kick is blocked. Brian Yingling and Manny uh, Miller came straight up the middle Brian and uh, got their hands up on the ball. And it is 6 nothing for Alderdice. By the way, that kicker is named Molly Virtue. 
So they have a female kicker there that just could not get the ball up in the air on that one. Um, Mountain Lions got that blocked. And that could be a critical extra point here um, You know, as we go forward. So Alderdice will get set to kick off again. Again, early, not even a minute into the game. Uh, Terrell James from the Dragons of Alterdice steps in front of an Aiden Steinbugel quick screen and takes it to the house. 6 nothing Alderdice after the blocked kick. So they actually threw the ball two out of the first three plays. <laughs> and that's what happened. Last week, every single play, nine plays straight to hand off up the middle to Ethan Straub, and they went down and, the, and, and the run was not to Straub either. Right. Exactly. Stai Bugle took it on a keeper and went for 10-yard first down. So again, Dokes and Yost is back deep. This one looks like it's going to Yost. Yost goes straight up the middle, gets hit at the 30, stays on his feet, and the pile is pushing forward. And they're going to stop it, I believe, at the 35 where the whistle is. And he's still never went down. They just picked the stripe and put it on there. <laughs> yard return. Not sure where the officiating crew is from tonight. We'll see if we can get that information at halftime. So again, Alderdice will get set on defense. They run basically a 5-2, but they are bringing nine guys into the box. Straub gets the handoff up the middle. He gets hit right away. Uh, gains about two yards and uh, 55. Who's 55 tonight? Marco Watson. Uh, Mario Watson Watt steps in. Yeah, Mario Watkins just buried Ethan, his shoulder right into Ethan Straub's belly there and drove him backwards. It almost looks like he was uh, sort of a spy. He's moving wherever there, Straub's moving. There's the uh, the, f the faux motion uh, that the Mountain Lions do all the time and drew all the dice, dice off sides. That was only like half the team, that one. So second and short for the Mountain Lions here. We got about three to go. Again, everyone's looking over at the sideline to get the signals. You got Dokes and Hellman out in a split position to the right. Strout behind. You got four guys to the left. Spriggs comes around behind in that motion and goes back over. And Straub gets the dive. He breaks through the first line and gets into the secondary. He's going to end up gaining approximately, we're going to give him 12 yards from the 42 to the 46 of Altoona. So that's a 12-yard gain for Ethan. And the Mountain Lions move into uh, Alderdice territory. I wonder if we're going to see too many passes right now. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't think so. So Mountain Lions, their second drive of the night. The first one was stopped by an interception, pick six for a touchdown. They just picked up a first down on this drive. Again, this time Dokes is on the right side in the wing position, and he came across in that little motion. And just a straight handoff to Straup. He gets through the first level, and he's going to pick up approximately four yards. Mario Watkins. Yeah, that was just like uh, your, off, your off tackle play that um, not the triple option that they usually do. Now, the, the, the opening hole seems to be there, and then it closes very quickly. Um, and I think it closes because they have nine guys in the box. Right. And, I mean, there's no question that, that uh, Alderdice possesses some speed. Um, they, can, they can close quickly to the football. Um, you know, their their MO is they're not always the most disciplined and organized team. So you gotta you know try to take advantage of that when you can. That was the fake handoff option and there's a penalty flag. I believe it was a face mask. You're correct. So we'll see what happens. But uh, Steinbugel decided to hold on to it and he also had Dokes coming around for a pitch. 
Um, by then, the defender was in there, and as he was tackling, it did look like he had a bit of the face mask with him. That is the call, so the Mountain Lions will move ahead. They're only, is that a five-yard? Yeah, it's a five-yard, which they don't have at any other level anymore, but they still have in high school. So it actually ends up being a three-yard penalty. Because it was second and six, and now it's second and three. Because it's from the spot of the foul, not the line of scrimmage. But they do get the down over, and that's important. Yes. Spriggs goes around. And it seems like that Alderdice is blitzing every time that wing guy leaves. They came through quick. Again, Steinbugel kept the ball, did not pitch it to Spriggs, and he got hit in the backfield, probably a loss of two. Alderdice is doing a good job of collapsing that outside. So third and five, I believe you're going to have the Mountain Lions here in uh, two down territory. 8.05 to go first quarter. Mountain Lions down 6-0, courtesy of a pick six. Spriggs again loops around behind and then resets. Straup gets it. And again, number 55, uh, Mario Watkins Mario is sort of Watkins spying him Straub, and makes the uh, tackle. Straub. Straub does pick up. Are we going to give him four or five? And it's going to be about a yard short here. So we're going to go four. And, four the play. and they will be four going for it here. One. Do you go on two? Do you go quarterback sneak? Maybe both. So you got the twins to the left. And quick handoff. Straup goes through, gets through the linemen and into the backers. And again, Watkins makes the tackle, but he doesn't make it for, we're going to give him uh, five on that. Yeah, this time they went to the left side. They had been exclusively to the right side thus far. And, uh, change things up a little bit away from the big man. Oh, and that's the thing I'm trying to watch. Are they, they're not running directly at him. They're running lateral, either left or the hole just to his right, uh, his outside. So you have a D end or an outside linebacker uh, lined up to the outside. He's the one who picked it off before. And he's looking for it again. It's a quick pass over the middle. He got his hands on it, but it was picked up and caught. Nope. They're waving it as an incomplete pass. Yeah. It looked like Halman got his hands underneath, uh, but both the Alderdice uh, defense and the officials say that he did not, and it bounced into his hands. So that's an incomplete pass and a second and 10 from the 32. The, the official was right there, and Ethan Halman did not uh, – really say much, so it must have hit the ground. It was almost a clean pick there. He got his hands down there. So Howman's out on the right by himself. Dokes comes out to the left. There's four offensive linemen to the left, and it was obvious on that play as Straup just took it to the left. Everybody just went straight downfield, and Straup's going to pick up seven yards. And now, once again, they have Two downs to get three. They're going quick here. And another handoff to Straup. Dive through. Somebody got down to his legs coming through at the beginning. It looked like it was Cornell Weems, number eight. And then, or that was number six, I'm sorry. So that was Noah Johnston. And uh, before Straup could get his feet back under him, he was tackled by two or three more guys. So he got one, and it's fourth and two. The play clock keeps sticking at 20. This one on the right on down here. Side. Yeah. Yeah, because one's a 10. Oh, now they both are matched up. Right. But it doesn't matter. Straup gets the ball, goes Straub diving up the middle, down gets the down to a, uh, we'll give it the 19. So that's going to be a five-yard gain. So several of the defenders uh, uh, for 
for uh, Hassan Marshall for Alderdice, Hassan Marshall and Noah Johnston. They're they're kind of guessing and they're they're kind of blitzing on this. Um, they guessed left on that one. They went right and and there was nobody there to make the play. Strout picks up an easy five and a first down. Strout takes it again and is met by two or three guys. He'll still get one to two yards. We'll give him one. So I think the first drive they were coming out trying to attack the perimeter to keep Alderdice, uh, you know, keep them in the zone so they don't overcommit to the run. But this time they're just coming back straight run. There was one pass to Halman. He was not able to come up with it. It was tipped at the line of scrimmage. There's a pitch around to Dokes and great defensive play. Um, the defender number 10, which I believe is Hassan Marshall. Hassan Marshall, he's, Marshall you he's were just talking kinda, about. Yeah, he's been kind of attacking did. the line of scrimmage, and he did a good job there attacking that play. So that's a loss of one by Dokes. Mountain lines come to the line of scrimmage. People are moving around. I think we're going to see a timeout. 3.32 to go first quarter. Uh, Alderdice has not run an offensive play yet in the first <laughs> eight and a half minutes, but they do have a 6 nothing lead. Courtesy of an interception, returned 49 yards for a touchdown by Terrell James. Uh, Brian Yinling got under, uh, in through the line of scrimmage and blocked the extra point. So again, six nothing Alderdice Dragons over the Altoona Mountain Lions here tonight. Yeah, and Alderdice is uh, is showing their athleticism on the, on the perimeter, especially, and, and the Mountain Lions really they have to keep the ball inside in between the tackles, and they're going to have to block that up, and they're going to have to execute that until Alderdice brings their guys in the middle. They're trying to come around the outside, and I watched a little bit of film on them today too, and they tried to do that a lot. They come around the outside, they cannot catch. Uh, Ethan Straub only lined three, four yards behind the quarterback. They can't get there in time on those quick handoffs uh, to, 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 to corral him. So, uh, you know, those are the kinds of plays that, that, that the Mountain Lions have been successful at so far. Um, but, of course, you know, they have to find a way to, to do all those things. You, they have to run around the outside a little bit to make this offense work. So there's trips to the right coming out of the timeout. It's third and ten at the 19. Dokes moves into a wing. Steinbugel was going to go under center. He stepped back into a shotgun. Straup is lined up to his left. He drops back for a pass. He's getting chased from behind. As he lets it go, he gets hit. He just throws it up in the air, and it was caught and then knocked free uh, right at the end. It it's Tyson Reed. Uh, he has, has his hands on it, and he just got hit from behind. He outjumped one defender. Um, and then he got hit from behind and just knocked the ball out. So if Palilla would come out, it would be approximately a 36-yard field goal. It looks like the Mountain Lions are going to stay with the offense on the 4th and 10 at the 19. So Alderdice did a little bending, but they haven't, you know, broke. They gave up two runs to start the game, a 10- and 12-yard run. And since that, they've kept the Mountain Lions basically at about a 3- to 4-yard average. Screen. Screen. Stroud picks it up. He makes a cut. He makes a second cut. And on extra the effort at down. the end, he got the first down at the nine. He got 10 yards. Exactly. He needed 10 yards. Got a big block out here uh, to spring him. And then the rest was Ethan Straup uh, spinning, picking his way. Just got the, the sticks. First down, first and goal now at the nine for the Mountain Lions. And he got completely spun around about the 12 and was able to keep his feet and dive first forward goal, to get the first down. The so double wing. Ethan Strop has two catches already. <laughs> he hasn't had one all year. So Tyson Reed is the one wing along with Dokes on the other. This time he comes around, but Straup gets the ball going up the middle. He's going to get two. Ethan Straup, the ball carrier. 
That's his 10th carry in the first quarter here for 41 yards. 2.34 to go first quarter. Mountain Lions on a second and goal at the seven. Second and goal at the seven. Mountain Lions are going to line up in the same formation. Taborn is wide right. You got two wings. The interesting thing is on the right side that Dokes lines up at a wing inside of the tight end, Chandler Brendel. He lines up between the tackle and the end. Steinbuchel goes out to the side, hits Taborn. Taborn tries to get step out of one tackle and actually gets pushed backwards. So he's going to lose with one yard. Now, I like going to Taborn because he has about a six-inch advantage over his defensive back that, that's playing on him over there. Um, but I don't like that route. I think you should go that fade to the end zone where he can jump out, he just jump up right. and catch the ball. And he's playing on a guy that's probably five foot six or seven. Right. With 21. Brandon Massey is listed at 5'5 five five out there. <laughs> I was giving him some. Though. Taborn's six foot three, so yeah, he's he has a huge advantage. So Hellman this time's out by himself. Quick pitch around and a throw back. Reed throws the ball and it is caught. He, is. Oh, he knocked out of his hands, but he held it long enough. They said that was interesting. Because the ball did get knocked out of his hands, but but they said he held it long enough and gave him the touchdown. Tyson Reed with the, the little trickeration there on the halfback option. So a eight-yard touchdown. That was interesting. As you said, from here, I could see the ball was hit, but I couldn't tell if it was hit right away or if it was hit after he had his one, two feet down in the end zone. So there's a, a whistle to stop the play, which helps the Mountain Lions because the snap rolled back. We going under review? Is that why under. we're getting a whistle? Maybe. <laughs> now, there's no review in high school. Another thing that was interesting about that play, Howman had a little, little tiny little push off to give himself a little bit of space there to jump up and get it. Um, I didn't hear the penalty. Uh, it's just a sideline warning on all wow. So Altoona ties it up, and here they're going for the lead with 104 remaining in the first quarter. And the kick is up, and, and Palolo puts it through and, and gives Altoona the lead. That's something we have not seen yet this year. For our student basketball, uh, safety as well as yours, walking around the outside of the track. A receiver around, like, reverse pass almost. Right. A little half back, back option, whatever you want to call it. Uh, um, but it was a good call. It was there. It was, it was open. Um, what a strange start to this game. Minute left in the first quarter. It, the, the game started 23 minutes ago in real time. Alderdice has not run a play yet. <laughs> yes, 11 minutes. Yeah, in. strange, strange start to this ball game. So Tyson Reed throws probably his first pass and first touchdown at the high school level. I would imagine, maybe ever, at any level, maybe not even on Madden. I don't know. Well. The call or the touchdown, I don't know which, has taken the sails out of Alder Dice's uh, momentum, uh, out of their feelings on the sideline. The entire defense basically just came over, and they're sitting back on the benches. Um, a couple of the other guys standing up front, but they, they seem a little dejected after that touchdown. Or it could just be that it's, you know, 63 or 73 degree weather, and they've been on the field 11 minutes. Yeah. Looks like uh, Hassan Marshall is back there and William Coleman, number two. So Altoona has run 20 plays, and Alderdice is just getting the ball on offense here for the first time. The ball is dropped by number 10. 
he will pick it up, get to the left, and it looks like he's going to get tackled and met hard. Uh, so again, Hassan Williams there, and Zach Reimer, the junior, comes up and makes a nice tackle to uh, stop Alderdice from starting at their own 20. They're going to start somewhere around the 16, 17, 18. So and we'll see uh, Alderdice come out here and uh, Jerome Parker see what he can uh, he so, can do a quarterback here. So Parker is the quarterback and their lead running back. I'm not sure at this point. The, I don't know either. We had some movement, but there's a quick screen and it's dropped. Again, number 10, Hassan Marshall um, is the running back. He go, goes out to the side in motion, so it's an empty backfield, and he drops that little screen pass, which is almost the same play Mountain Lions ran early that was picked off. 50 seconds to go in the first quarter. Altoona out in front, 7-6. I believe the official spread from the uh, Patriot News this morning was Altoona favored by eight. Ah. Man comes in motion, quick handoff. Again, that's just Hassan up the uh, Hassan Marshall up the middle, and he's going to get four. Hassan Marshall. We're giving them four or three. No, uh, looks like three. Okay. So, yeah, according to what I saw, like, Hassan Marshall's not even in the carry list. Um, <laughs> who knows? So, Parker was throwing most of the night against North Allegheny, so we'll see on a third and nine. He goes back. Ball is thrown downfield. Um, they went on three streaks. Everybody just went straight. Ball was in the air. 50, 55, almost 60 yards, and he just overthrew everybody. Yeah, I, I saw him throw the ball. He, they had a 65-yard touchdown pass, uh, a bomb uh, against North Allegheny that, that uh, and, they scored on. And Manny Miller really could have got in and laid him out. And uh, when he realized the ball was coming out of the hand, he just laid off and <laughs> did not uh, commit the penalty. Now, North Allegheny did block one of their punts. And Manny Miller almost had that one. And it's caught, fair caught, at the 45-yard line Tyson by Tyson Reed. Reed. And that is the end of the first quarter with the Mountain Lions out in front. <laughs> Seven to six over the Alderdice Dragons. It's not exactly what we expected in the first half, but uh, uh, you know, kind of 90% of the quarter is kind of what we expected. The Mount Lions to possess the ball, drive down the field, score, play some decent defense. Just that one little pick six here that almost has the game even as the score set at seven six because they missed the extra point. You know, it's the only little flaw so far in the Mountain Lions. So officially, Mountain Lions had the ball 10 minutes and 56 seconds to Alderdice's 104. We're going to start the second quarter with the Mountain Lions back on offense. With a shorter field this time. So again, I'm Jim Abbott along with Chris Strawmeyer. Uh, Mountain Lion uh, football is brought to you by the MLTV crew. Uh, the students run production is led tonight by Caleb Fries, Noah Fries, Gabe Ebersaw, Brooke Long, Ben Shank, and Chris Fox. And again, advisor Doug Sipes oversees everything here for the last 20, 25 years in that uh, production studio. And the kids do an awesome job. And uh, Chris and I are happy to bring these games to you. Yeah, it's pretty cool that, like, you know, they, they do the whole thing and, and uh, um, you know, they do basketball too and some volleyball and some other things at times, and it's pretty amazing. This time we got a tight formation. Everybody is inside. And, again, who gets the ball? Strout. He goes up the middle. This time there were ten dragons in the, uh, in the box there. He's able to pick up. Uh, we're going to give him three. Yeah, they keep that up. They're going to do a little play action one of these times and just have somebody wide open down the field. Three. 
So the Mountain Lions have a second and seven from the 42 of Alderdice. Same formation as last time. Basically double tight, double wing. Strout behind Steinbugle. And there was a lot of hand fighting coming off the line of scrimmage and then some flags are thrown because uh, Robert Brown was basically holding on to Andre Dokes as he was trying to clear the corner. Yeah, I think he thought it was a running play and he was <laughs> blocking him or something. Third play, pass interference, number four on the defense. And that one kind of hurts all today. So that was just a little four-yard pass at best and turns into a 15-yard penalty. Gives the Mountain Lions a first down down at the 27-yard line here. So the Mountain Lions will come up. They get a first and 10. This time, Hellman goes out to the left. Mountain Lions are overloaded a little bit to the left. Dokes comes around. He takes the handoff. He'll cut up behind. And he just realized that the hole was closing and, and, and cut straight up. And he'll pick up three. So that's Dokes' second carry of the evening. Yeah, that hole closed fast. And we've seen that out of Alderdice. They, they, they do have a lot of athletic ability at the linebacker in the secondary position. Very quick. And they can close down those gaps quickly. Wow, look at this formation. <laughs> so the Mountain Lions have twins and a tight end to this side, as well as the wing. So you have everybody except the guard and, or the center and tackle on, on the right side of the ball. And it's given to Straup, and they get through. Robert Brown dives through and tackle, tackles Brown Straup for a loss here. of two. On the tackle. So for Brown. having basically nine guys or eight guys on this side of the line, Brown. the Mountain Lions were not able to block Robert Brown, who is right on the end. So probably four down territory here. They have two plays to get the nine yards that they need, you would think. Now, I believe Palillo kicked somewhere around a 35, 37-yard field goal last year. So to get in his range, you pretty much got to get inside the 20. Quick drop back and pass over the middle. And... That was Jerome Parker. Par Parker just, up. yeah, he, he broke it up. And his way to break it up was just basically uh, hit Tyson Reed, you know, as he's catching the ball. And uh, he, he was able to dislodge it from Tyson. And the uh, Mountain Lions now have a fourth and nine at the 26. They did convert uh, last quarter on a fourth and 10 on a pass play to Ethan Strout. Now you got trips to the left. Or, yeah, trips out to the left. One receiver, Howman to the right. Some sort of screen play. And again, Robert Brown just stays home and makes a great play. Tyson Reed made the catch, and instead of cutting straight up field behind some blockers, he came over a little too far right, and Robert Brown was there and made the tackle for a three-yard loss. Yeah, they have to they have to throw the ball downfield a little bit. It's 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 the the short pass syndrome now that I mean Alderdice is on to it and they're just staying at home. Well nine thirty five to go second. Mountain Lions out in front, seven six. Alderdice ready for their second possession. Man in motion. And it's a run up the middle this time. It's Brown that got the ball. He's the man we expected. Braun Mosley, great penetration there. And uh, Brown comes through. And are we going to give him one yard? And now we're giving him nothing. So no gain on the play. It's going to be second and ten.
Alderdice does not use a tight end. Parker rolling out left. He throws the ball short, and it's in and out of the hands of his receiver. That's number six, Dennis Johnson. And uh, Johnson had some room. If he caught it, he was going to pick up the first and maybe more. Uh, but it bounced right off his hands and incomplete. I had Noah Johnson. Oh, Dennis Johnson is uh, out tuna. Number six and number <laughs> six. Ironically, his name Johnson. is Johnston. Noah Johnston. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's like, my fault. I, I was confused on that one. Yeah, Noah Johnston. Anyway, um, yeah, that hit him in a bad spot right in the hands. Like, literally, that was a good pass by Parker. Nice little touch pass, and he couldn't. Hold Mountain Lions blitz, and it looks like they're going to get to him. And somebody lost a shoe. That was the quarterback. Manny Miller was in there. Mosley was in there. Yeah, man, those, they were the first two that got there. A couple other guys got there. That's going to be a loss of, what, six? Mm, I would have had a little more than four. I don't know. They're calling it four, I guess. Okay. But, yeah, the Mountain Lions defense just doing a great job there. Not given an inch here so far. Two three and outs for Alderday so far. So Miller and Bad snap Mosley. over his head. There's a penalty, though. And it's going to be on. I think it's a it's false start. False start. Alderday gets a break. They commit their own penalty and get a break. That happens from time to time. Yeah. It was nice to see uh, NFL football last night. Not saying I, I'm happy Tom Brady won. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> it doesn't seem to matter what team he's on. But a couple of those guys, Grunk and Brown, they looked like they were in their prime 10, 15 years ago. So there's a quick kick. And it's going to take an Alderdice bounce all the way down to the 35, 33-yard line. So from the 19 to the 33, that's going to be a 44, 40, no, 49-yard kick. And um, there was really no effort from the punter. He just took one, two steps and got the ball up, and uh, it started bouncing about the 40 and went another 20, 25 yards. Yeah, once again, he barely got it off. Mandy Miller was in there again. And, and I had said, you know, watching the film today, that their punt game was very – their special teams overall is very suspect, to be honest with you. The Mountain Lions should be able to take advantage of that tonight in one form or another here. Parker's up in a blitz formation from free safety. So they're pretty much putting everybody up front. Pitch goes out and around to Spriggs. And Spriggs is going to pick up a couple Taylor yards. On the carry. David Stavanes on the stop. Yeah, David Stavanes just wouldn't let Spriggs go. Just got a, got a hold of him there and wrestled him down for Three only a couple, after a couple yard gain. So the, the, the interesting thing I, I'm going to say from here that I'm seeing is that Alderdice is going to say throw. Yeah. They're putting everybody up front. You're not going to move the ball on us running. You've got to throw, and you've got to throw downfield. Right, and, and teams do that somewhat, but they're really doing it. Alderdice is just saying the heck with it. Bad snap. <laughs> Steinbugel goes back, and he's going to get tackled. He's going to lose 19 yards. And right there lies the problem, not the snap necessarily, but that wasn't good. But... You know, I don't. I don't know if they're not, they're, they're not, the line is not giving him time and pass protection at all. And the blitzes are all coming from pretty much the tackles out. That's a loss of 18 on the play. So it's now going to be third and 26. Twins both sides. Mountain Lions air went out, and it it's a good power interference. And there's a flag on the play. That was a good pass. Time you could put it right on him. He put it right on the numbers. Right on Taborn. So it's going to be a 15-yard penalty first down on a third and 26. From here, as the referee said, because he had his mic on. 
<laughs> on the defense, number six. That'll be a 15-yard penalty. We're going to replay third down. So it'll, that's not an automatic first yeah. down in high so school. It's going to be four, third and 11. Right, so it'll be third and 11. So basically, you lose 19, you get 15 back. 6.20 to go in the second. Mountain Lions holding on to a one-point lead. Ends up third and 10 somehow. Somehow the math didn't add up, but <laughs> hey. Well, I had it should have been third and 11. So they walked off 16. So we'll take the extra yard. So this brings up third and 10 at the 33 after the penalty. So we're going to see pretty much the same formation that the Mountain Lions just went in. Tayborn over the middle. He had it, and it came out of his hands. And it was a good defensive play. That time, by again, Hassan Marshall's been all over the field yeah. defensively and has kept Alderdice in this game. And on a third and 10 from their own 33, it looks like the Mountain Lions, are they going to go for it? There's a flag. Oh, I didn't see a flag. Clear on the far side there on about the 37-yard uh, line. There it is. So it's probably... It's either a sideline type of thing or it's a like know. a hold or something or an offensive pass interference on the mountain. But I doubt it's defensive pass interference way over there. The coaches are just standing from Alderdice right by the flag wondering what's going on. I think it's on the mountain lines, yeah, it looks and like. Yeah, he said decline. Illegal formation oh. on the offense. Wide receiver covered up. Penalties declined. Fourth down. Well, that's weird that the flag was actually like five yards downfield. <laughs> Usually it's right at the line of scrimmage when it's one of those. But anyway, back to that. I mean, honestly, Taborn should have caught that ball. That was a good that was a good throw. It's time you could put it right right where he needed to. Um, yeah, he got tackled from behind, but You know, it's the first half and the mountain lines have thrown ten times already. <laughs> I know, it's amazing. So six fifteen to go. Mountain lines will kick the ball away. Straub sets up. Nice spiraling kick right to Brown. Brown takes it, but what a tackle. Wow. Is that uh, number 20, number 20, Mason Walk came up and just made a, a, a great tackle. He just met Brown as he was making his cut, put his face mask in his chest, and just drove through him. Five yard return. So Alderdice will start on their own 37-yard line. So far in their two drives, they have negative two yards. So you have uh, twins again both ways, and you have Brown deep. Brown's going to get the ball. He goes through the middle, and... I believe that was Connor Reimer tried to slow him down, but Brown was able to get, they're going to give him out to the 49-yard line, or 44-yard line, I'm sorry. That's a seven-yard gain for Brown. And they have a different quarterback in there. Okay, yep. Number 13, we're going to have to Azarick list Jeter. Azarick Jeter. He's a sophomore. So um, I don't know. I mean... If something happened to Parker or what, because Parker certainly has a tremendous arm. We've seen it already today. He slung the ball downfield about 55 yards on that one play. Hand off to Brown again. He's going to cut to the left. He gets to the outside, gets the first down, and fumbles. The ball comes out. It bounces right to a mountain line. They're calling him down. But they're saying his knee was down before the ball came out. So they are going to give him a... We'll give him a seven-yard gain. Brown Jr. on the carry. Caleb Sprigg on the tackle. And Caleb Spriggs, Kevin. as he was trying to tackle him, punched with his left hand, did knock the ball out, but by then Brown's knee was already down. So this time Brown comes out, and Marshall comes back in. Trips to the right, lone receiver to the left. Jeter set to get the snap, gives a quick pitch to Marshall. Marshall tries to get to the outside, does not get off the line of scrimmage. 
and again, it looked like uh, number 23 for the Mountain Lions. Yeah, Mosley was Mosley. in there. He's on that play. He's on that play again. Mosley is moving from side to side from that linebacker position, and, and just making plays on that perimeter. So he's pretty much lined up right as the middle backer. This time he's faking coming, and they come, and it's offsides on the Mountain Lions. Because both him and Yingling, they were doing some sort of stunt. Mosley went right, Yingling went left. And that's the Mountain Lions' first penalty of the night. And we're not used to the Mountain Lions don't commit very many penalties, especially pre-snap penalties. also walking around the track also is not permitted for our safety of everyone. Thank you. So there's the snap. It's a fake handoff. Quarterback throws a nice little dump pass off to the right to number six. That is Johnston again. This Don't time he holds on to it. He's going to go for 10 yards. And Jeter with the left-hander here. And just go out there with a little bit of touch out to Johnston, and that's enough for a first down. Alderdice driving here on the mountain lines. And a left-handed quarterback can throw off a defense. And Jeter rolling left to his dominant side is not something the mountain lines were used to or studying. There's movement up front. It looks like this one's going to be on Alderdice. I think the left tackle moved. Mari Jones. No. Is there a 50? Oh, there. He's on the oh, right he's tackle. On the, he's on the other side. side. Okay. I agree. I thought it was 52 from my point of view. And, and then we could see. And then I thought his buddy come over and consoled him. So, oh, well, whatever. Doesn't matter. Twins left and right. Man in motion. Quick handoff. He gets to the outside and is drugged down Ethan by Ethan Straub. Straub. Steps up and tackles uh, the motion man for the loss. That was William Coleman. And that's a pretty big loss. Now, let's, let's give it three, two. Yeah, it looks like they're giving him a two-yard loss. One. I still think it was more than one, so we'll, I'll say two. So that's the first time we've seen Coleman run the ball, and he lost two yards on the attempt. Second down and 21 at the 41-yard line. It's not 21. So, yeah, they had 21 on the board. Ace formation, man coming across. Quick movement, pass over the middle. This one again goes to Coleman. Coleman's able to make one or two guys miss, and he'll end up. Hitting. They're going to call. They're going to call a blindside block on Yost. Is exactly what they're going to call. And flag on the play. On Yost. I, against you uh, on on older dice. The oh, guy who okay. blocked Yost. I think okay. it was number five. They have a five. But I saw it, and I'm like, eh, I don't know. And then, yep. Yeah, then the flag came late. It'd be a gain of ten, uh, nine if it holds. And that's 15 yards. That's that's a big penalty. Is it spot or is it? Should be a spot, I think. And, and, and traditionally, that blindside block, they put it in a couple years ago. It's when you're facing your own goal line. But it was kind of sideways. Yeah, that's what they called. Wow, that's a big, big penalty on Alderdice. Yeah, and that's like that's a shit. Like uh, Eugene Hall, number five. He he come out. He makes a big block actually to spring his guy. He thinks he's being, you know, physical in a football game. But you have to pay attention to that. You can't do that in the open field anymore. You just kind of have to get in the way. So now it's going to be second and twenty-six. Trip left, motion left. Quick screen coming left to Brown. Brown makes the catch, and he's going to pick up 10, maybe 11 yards. They'll give him 11. 
And you can see that play developing from the start, and the mount lines are definitely had nobody out there. Now, they're, they're playing a little bit of uh, soft coverage there to, to prevent, you know, a big play. I wouldn't call it prevent defense, but, you know, it was kind of similar to that. So we got about a third and 15 for Alderdice. Mountain Lions look like they're going on a full blitz. There's no safeties. Everybody is manned up against receivers and everyone else underneath. And straight streaks coming. There's a streak down the sideline. Good pass, and he cannot come up with it. Again, that was thrown out to Coleman. That was a nice ball yeah, thrown by Jeter. Yeah, eight, it was catchable. It, it was a little bit behind. He had to spin around a little bit, which is tough for a receiver, but very catchable. And, and the Mountain Lions, that's the one spot, like you said, they were vulnerable. They had no safety back. They had that man-to-man -man coverage. And if they don't get home, which they didn't, you know, you're going to have problems. So what's going to happen here? Fourth and 17. Fourth and 17, they're going 15, for it. 15, you're going for it. Let's see the defense that the Mountain Lions play this time. This time they do have two corners and a safety back a little, giving some room. Brown goes to the outside. Ball's just going to be thrown deep down the middle and in and out of the hands as he falls backwards. He turned his body around to look at the ball and it bounced off his sort of his shoulder pads and then his face mask. That was Johnston again, I think. And, uh, Reed was there, and then Dokes is the one that really batted the ball away and deflected the, the, the broke, it broke the play up for the Mountain Lions. So the Mountain Lions do take over on downs. A little bit of a scare there. Alderdice moved the ball a little bit on them and got into their territory, but the defense stiffened and uh, were aided by a few penalties there that, that really helped the Mountain Lions out. So what happens here now is you got 121 to go in the half. Altoona's got two timeouts and are starting from their own 39 because – Alderdice went for it on that fourth and 15. And they've already thrown the ball 10 times this half. <laughs> we might see some more. Uh, I hope with only a minute and 21 to go. Steinbugel steps back three, steps Wide over Wide open. Middle. Wide open. All the way down to the 15, the 10, and the ball is smacked away. And it goes out of bounds. At the one. At the one, luckily. So if it, it goes out of bounds a foot further and hits the pylon, it's a touchback. That's unbelievable. So do they get the ball down at the one? Yeah. Because that's where the ball went out of bounds. Yep. So, so that actually is a 60-yard gain. <laughs> that is very fortunate. The whole time he was running, I'm thinking he's going to get hot from, caught from behind, protect the ball, protect the ball. You, we've seen that so many times in football that the guy gets caught and they po poke the ball out. Well, great play call, though. He was wide open, Tyson Reed, just right over the middle. And if that goes another, another foot. Yeah, if it just hits the pylon even, like one more foot, it's it's a touchback and it's older dice ball at the 20 yard line. That was a great play. I believe it was Brown again. That just, you know, as um, Reed was going by, he caught up to him from behind and punched the ball out from the right side. And actually, you know, gives him the ball down to the one foot line. Very fortunate. So the Mountain, Mountain Lions, Lions can go into halftime with a little bit of a breather if they can, uh, in four plays in the next minute and ten seconds, drive it into the end zone. And I think that will happen. And I think uh, before they blew their whistle for the timeout, we saw how the Mountain Lions are going to do it. Coach Niedemeyer's favorite call when he was the quarterback, sneak up the middle. Get your whole line and your backs and everybody, and now the backs are allowed to push. Right, which he didn't used to be able to do now. Yeah, you just give them a push and boom. And the Mountain Lions have shown that many times this year that they just do that little sneak, and, and it's been very successful. Steinbugel had two touchdowns last week, one in the third quarter, one in the fourth quarter. And he lines up with everybody around him, and they're just, oh, penalty. What do we got? Somebody has too many guys on the field.
So I didn't see any movement. There goes an Alder Dice guy off. They had 12 men up front. So literally, <laughs> literally six inch penalty. <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to even say almost a three inch penalty. Yeah. So Alder Dice has shot themselves in the foot. That's the sixth penalty for 60 That's yards. It. Plenty, plenty in. And Steinbeagle <coughs> pushes his way through. Touchdown. Mountain line. So they had a minute 21, and I think they only used about what 15 seconds, maybe. I think it's down to a minute 106. So 15 seconds. That's all that drive was. And it was basically two plays. One play um, probably went for about 45 yards, and then a 14 yard fumble that luckily went out just before the end zone. Palilla will set to kick. Good snap. Holds down, and the kick is good. And it's a good by Palilla. So Altoona gets a little breathing room right before half. Courtesy of the Aiden Steinbugel one-yard touchdown run. Again, it was set up with a perfect, uh, almost like an old tight end pop, but he was playing a wing on that side with no tight end as he just took straight down the line of scrimmage, right down the numbers, and uh, there was nobody there. He had about 10 yards on people, and then finally Brown caught him at the end, punched the ball out, I'm going to say somewhere around the 14, and it just really took a roll down down the edge of the sideline, and uh, the pigskin was a fortunate bounce for the mountain lines because it bounced out at the one-foot line. <laughs> that was very fortunate. And again, if that ball goes into the end zone or, or hits the pylon, it comes so as a touchback right and comes out the other way, and Alderdice would have took over at their own 20. Yeah, game of inches, you know, we say that all the time, but that literally was right there, game of inches. So 14 to 6. 106 to go before half. Crawford back to kick. Nice kickoff down to about the four-yard line. That's Coleman. Coleman takes it there, comes up the middle. He makes a cut. Looks like he's going to break away, and he fumbles, fumbles the ball. There was a drag in there, to, I think, to recover. Coleman on the return. I think they got it back. And like, like we've mentioned all night, special teams has been a disaster for Alder Dice all season. And uh, a couple times now, one time they snapped the ball over the punter's head into the end zone, but they were lucky because they – had an illegal procedure penalty, so they got to get a do over there. And they fumble the kickoff here, and luckily they get it back. So, And that could be one of the reasons they did not attempt a punt right before, like, that touchdown. Right. You know, on a fourth and 15, they decide to throw it instead of pin the Mount Lions back. And um, now just under a minute here, 57 seconds, they have both their timeouts. You know, this could be – you know, it's kind of a critical time. They could get down and score here. They could also make a mistake. <clears throat> and the Mountain Lions could take advantage of a short field here. And they emptied the backfield. Mountain Lions came with a blitz. And I, I just really think that Alex Yost wished that that ball was held onto for an extra second because he had him lined up and he was going to take him out. But as soon as the, the throw was released, he backed off of it, and again, the ball looked to be dropped. So Alderdice has not been in the best position. They're hurting themselves. And that's still Jeter, the sophomore. Since he's come in, he does, he's done a pretty good job for uh, Alderdice. There's a handoff to Brown, and he's going to be met Mount pretty Lines much. may call timeout. I was going to say right at the line of scrimmage, but actually that was a loss of a yard. And they do call time. Somebody called timeout. Manny Miller with the stop. 41 seconds. Of it's going to be third and 11. And they haven't put up on the board yet. Altoona called timeout. Okay, there it goes. <clears throat> so Altoona takes a timeout. They're currently up 14 to 6. Let's quickly check the scoring. Um, Walter Dice opened the scoring in the first 56 seconds on a, an interception return for a touchdown. Uh, Terrell James. 
intercepted a screen pass and took it all the way down to the end zone 49 yards later. Uh, the kick was put up and blocked by Brian Yingling. So Alderdice led 6-0. Mountain Lions drove the length of the field. And on a reverse or a, a wingback uh, sweep to the right, um, Tyson Reed pulled up and threw an eight-yard touchdown path to Ethan Howman. Uh, Palillo kicked to give Altoona the lead just before the end of the first quarter, 7-6. And then Aiden Steinbugel just pushed his way into the end zone from about six inches out. So we officially have to give him the yard. And he gets his third touchdown, and Altoona gets an eight-point lead with 41 seconds to go here in a half. Big play here on third down. An incomplete pass would get it back to the mountain lines. And it's not an incomplete pass. It's a fumble. And who's going to pick it up? It looks like the oh. mountain lines had it, dropped it, and it's still in play. And then Brown is dropped out of bounds for approximately an eight-yard loss. So <laughs> There had to be four or five red jerseys that were probably all fighting over it, and then DeBall squirted it out right to Brown. Right to Brown. He was just standing there, and the next thing you know, the ball's in his hands, but it's now going to be fourth and 20, fourth and 21. And it's still a good thing here for the Mountain Lions. Make, make Alderdice punt, see if they can make a mistake. Uh, they should right. get good field position yeah, here. Reed, Reed's court. back. Um, and catch the ball here and try to get a little bit of a return. 28 seconds left. The Mountain Lions have one timeout left. So they can run a couple plays here and maybe get a score. And it's a bad short kick. But, again, it takes a roll. <laughs> and, and the older dice guy just grabs it. Kicks it at the 26. time. 21 seconds, ball's at the 26, they'll actually mark it at the 27. So the Mountain Lions will come back in for one last attempt to try to put some points on the board. I saw the official give the old uh, partially blocked sign, so I think the, somebody got a hand on it for the Mountain Lions. There's quite a few of them there, I'm not sure who it was, but definitely partially blocked that punt. One timeout and 27 yards. So you got 21 seconds, you can go underneath and call that timeout. Or you can try to uh, one or two plays put the ball up. So you got trips to the left. Is that Spriggs on this side on the right? It's Howman on the right here. And it was going to go to Howman. Steinbugel keeps it, starts running. He gets through a couple guys and gets hit at the 25. And the Mountain Lions are going to need to call their last time out. So he gets two yards on the scramble. But uh, 10 seconds come off the clock. And they have to get a first down here because um, they have no time. We're going to out of bounds. Right. They have no timeouts left. Um, but they, they could get a first down and come up and spike it and maybe get a field goal up, try out of this. It all depends what they want to do here. <clears throat> Most importantly, you got to get some yardage. About 10 yards, get down and come up and spike it. The clock will stop on the first down and then restart on the ready for play, not on the snap. So there's probably just enough time to do that and spike it. Or you just throw it in the end zone and get a touchdown. Yeah, that, <laughs> it'd be nice to get a touchdown right here, yeah. But they haven't thrown the ball downfield very much. Even their long play was kind of a short pass. So yeah, It was about 15 yards because it was yeah. over the, the linebackers. And the one thing, you know, with 11 seconds and no timeouts, I don't think you're going to see Alderdice putting everybody up in the line of scrimmage like they've done earlier in the evening. On the left side, they have at least they're, – they're going basically a, a cover two. They've got two safeties and two corners. And you might take advantage of Tamborn's size. Just throw it up to him, see if he can make a play. There's the – Dokes. Dokes catches, catches it and it. goes into the end zone. Nice catch. Yeah, just throw it up and see what happens and let your receiver make a play. Dokes did a good job. And, and, and that's the big difference. You got a six foot three guy going against a five seven, five eight guy. Yep. And Dokes goes up and makes the play. Great job. Mount Lions squeaking out a touchdown there when And that's Parker. That was their starting quarterback. So he listed as five ten. I don't think he's there. But four seconds to go. 
Mountain Lions really put some distance and open some things up. Palilla's kick is up and good. And the is good by Ian Palilla. So again, that was Dokes. On a 25-yard touchdown pass. From Steinbuehl. So for not having much scoring in the first 23 minutes, the, the Mountain Lions were able to put up 14 quick points in the last minute of the half and uh, make their, league a, their lead a little more comfortable right now at 21 to 6. Right, and that's, you know, that's pretty pretty big play. Alderdice will get the ball to start the second half. So, um, you know, Alderdice just had the ball a few minutes ago with some designs probably on going down and scoring themselves, right, and getting the ball back in the second half. Mountain Lions have a good defensive stand, get the ball back on a deflected punt with a short field, take advantage of it, hit the touchdown pass, and next thing you know, it's a two-score game. So that's that's huge in determining, you know, outcomes of ball games, the last couple minutes of the half and the first couple minutes of the second half. 111 yards passing on the evening right now for Steinbugel. He only had 93 in the first two games total, so. And passing the ball, he has one interception. He's six for 11 with one interception. And one touchdown. Line drive kick, it's just gonna go into the end zone. So Alderdice is gonna have to come out and there's a, something going on on the sidelines. A little bit of talking going on. A little bit of talking, a lot of pushing. So number seven for uh, Alderdice, Terrell James. He was kind of playing, uh, you know, like it's like baseball. They're playing uh, Kevin Crawford a little cheap there. And uh, he just kicked it over his head. You know, you should be back around the 10 yard line and not have that go over his head. And that was a lo low liner that was very returnable for them. So the ball is set at the 20. Alderdice is looking over at their coaches. The receiver on this side was offsides. Now he steps back just a little. And Parker's back in for this play. Probably going to just use his arm and fire it downfield as far as he can. And there's exactly what you said. He throws the Hill Mary, and it is caught and then knocked out of the hands. Number eight is that uh, Weems. He had the ball for a second, but then it was knocked out by Taborn, and the half ends 21 to 6. Mountain Lions out front. Sloppy played first half. Uh, Mountain Lions just quickly looking at things have about 150 yards. Straup has 42 yards on 12 carries. Uh, again, we said 6 of 11 for Steinbugel throwing one interception, one touchdown, and he has a running touchdown sneak up the middle. Uh, so the Mountain Lions take a 21 to 6 lead. It was 7 6 a minute and four seconds ago, but Mountain Lions with two late touchdowns take the lead into the locker room.
ladies and gentlemen, we proudly present the Alton Area High School Marching Band under the direction of Drum Major Charlotte Boyle. The Major are led by Captain Carly Mann, assisted by Co-Captain Matty Hughes. The Silks are led by Captain Ashley Smith, assisted by Co-Captain Gabby McClellan. The feature Majorette is Emma Sheridan. Over the past year, many people stream movies and shows as we experience more time at home. This season, we'll be highlighting some of the music from many of these popular movies and shows. Tonight's show opens with Jai Ho, the upbeat hit of the movie Slumdog Millionaire, and the music of the immensely popular streaming series The Mandalorian.
the 20th anniversary of 9-11, a tragedy we will never forget. Our thoughts and prayers continue to go out to everyone whose family and friends have been affected by this horrible event. We honor the heroes and the unfortunate people that lost their lives that day with the playing of God Bless America. instructor Mike Baker, band assistant is Drew Yingling, and band director Mr. Larry Datweiler. got the winning number for the 50-50. It'll be up on the really big board. Report to the flagpole if you got this number. 180-827. That's 180-827. It's worth $702. one 827 
Hello and welcome back to Mansion Park. Jim Abbott along with Chris Strahlmeyer. We're here for the Mountain Lions versus the Dragons of Alter Dice. Uh, Mountain Lions out in front 21 to 6 at the half. Uh, we're getting ready for the third quarter. And um, Mountain Lions with two late touchdowns. Uh, this has been a very strange game, Chris, as Alderdice scored on the second play of the game as a pick six, 49-yard interception. Uh, Altoona's first score was actually um, a pass uh, from uh, Tyson Reed on a uh, wingback sweep, stopped and dropped back and threw a pass to Easton Howman for eight yards and the, the kick through. So the first quarter was 7-6 Altoona. The second quarter um, was Steinbugel on a one-yard sneak after a 60-yard pass to Tyson Reed. And uh, again, it's either a 60-yard pass or a 46-yard pass and a 14-yard fumble as the ball was punched out of his hand. And luckily for the Mountain Lions, it rolled out of bounds just before it went to the end zone. And then off a uh, bad kick and whatever else in that last minute, uh, the Mountain Lions score on a beautiful pass um, from uh, Aiden Steinbugel uh, to, to Dokes, and, and Dokes made an incredible catch, Chris, right before the half, and the Mountain Lions out in front, 21-6. Yeah, we're seeing a side of the Mountain Lions we haven't seen all year. They've already thrown the ball more times in one half than they have all year added together, um, and that's kind of what Alderdice is making them do. Alderdice is really stacking the line of scrimmage, attacking the run game of the Mountain Lions, leaving themselves very wide open to some to some down the field passes uh, the mountain lions are taking advantage of that here um, and that's why they're up two scores here in the first half well again i believe the game plan was to take ethan straup out of the out of play for the mountain lions he has carried 12 times for 42 yards um, he had a 12 yard gain on his second carry but after that, he has not been able to get much traction at all. And the Mountain Lions have done more throwing, a trick play, um, a great little pass over the middle that Tyson Reed ran, uh, you know, for 40-something yards before it was smacked away and uh, went out of bounds. So the Mountain Lions retained possession, got the score. And the Mountain Lions are going to start this third quarter by kicking off uh, I believe this one is to Brown. Or it's no, uh, Terrell James. James, and he looked like he was going to get a lot more yardage than he did, and he gets tackled out of bounds at the 27. So Alderdice will start their first series here in the third quarter at the 27, and we're going to see if they could come up anything offensively. Running the ball, they have not done much. They've only run the ball for six plays tonight for a total of 14 yards. And passing the ball, they haven't done much better. They've thrown eight times for 21 yards. Um, they've lost a lot of yards on a fumble and another uh, on a partial sack and then uh, recovery, which we thought the Mountain Lions had, but it, it bounced out of there. So we'll see if the Mountain Lions can slow down the attack or stop the attack just like they did in the first half. Robert. Brown, Brown will seven. start the third quarter with a run up the middle. And we're going to give him a two-yard loss as the Mountain Lions closed quickly. One. And the sophomore, left-handed sophomore, Azarick Jeter, is in there, quarterback for, for Alder Days. So I think he was a little bit more effective. Um, he had their lone drive that kind of stalled eventually, but um, he, he was he was the, the quarterback at, when they had their their, their own decent drive in the first half. Well, they have trips left, uh, receiver to right, and there goes Brown, and they've been throwing to him. Here's another screen. This one's over the middle, caught by Johnston, and he looks like he's going to go for a first Johnson. down. He'll go <laughs> all the way from the 26 to the 38. And Tyson yep. Reed come out of nowhere to trip him up, or he had a oh. lot more green in front of him. So actually they're going to mark him at the 36, so they're going to give him a gain of nine. And that, it's not 10, Joe. So we're going to give him nine. That's his second catch for total 19. Mountain Lions were running out to cover Brown on that, and then they brought Johnston back across the middle. There goes Brown again. This time they are going to fake it to him, and Jeter's going to keep the ball. It's Brown, direct snap to Brown. Brown. Yep. Yeah. 
I don't even know if Jeter Robert was on the field. Brown. I didn't even see the switch. I saw the four, which is part of 14. Um, their numbers are smaller. The yeah, they're, hard to, they're hard to see. Yeah, that's Jeter's off the field right gain now. So it's a gain of four from Brown. He's off the field, and now James is the tailback. And Johnston, the, there's three of them standing back there. So this is the, the Alderdice Wildcat. There goes James, and there's a bad snap. Brown gets it, and he's going to try to throw, and then he's just going to sort of throw it away. So it's just an incomplete. Yeah, interesting. They just kind of play whoever back there. So this is their, <laughs> their third quarterback they're using tonight. And you'd think it was a wildcat, but he, you know, I mean, okay, so. Uh, Jeter's coming Jeter's back in. coming <laughs> back in, right. So I guess it was kind of a wildcat situation And there. I think that was supposed to be a, a, like a quick handoff or a quick something else as they had two different running backs in the backfield. It almost looked like an L formation, except there was no quarterback under center. And we have an official's time. James is coming back in. They don't know if they have 10 or 11. I, s I don't know why they, no, they reset to 25, so. But James kept coming in and out, so. Yeah, I don't know. Hand off to Brown. Brown gets through the hole. He picks up five, he picks up 10, and he gets a first down and spins his way down into Altoona territory. We'll give him 11 on the, the pickup. On the carry, Tyson Reed, number four on the stop. Okay, and there's a nice hole in the middle. I think Brian Yingling up front was going on a stunt, and uh, the stunt, he left the hole where the play came behind him. Other than that, you got Manny Miller and Riccio up front. Jeter back to pass. Sort of a draw play to Brown. Brown has nowhere to run that time and gets no yardage. He gets right back to the line of scrimmage. Robert Brown. Ethan Straup was in there, among several others. 9.02 to go, third quarter. Mount Lions out in front, 21-6. Alter Dice with the opening drive. They've driven 30 yards. Pick up the first, a couple first downs here. It is now second and 10. Trips to the left. Jeter gets the ball, fakes it to Brown. He rolls left. The left-hander throws it short underneath. And is, is that Johnston? He just leaped right over top of Caleb Spriggs. Uh, you're not allowed to jump? You might not be allowed to jump in high school. I don't know that rule. I didn't either, because I don't know what else it would be. That was a 14-yard pickup. Let's hear what they say here. They're walking off a penalty. We haven't heard the official tell us what it is yet. Whatever it was, Coach Niedemeyer was not happy. Hurdling is not allowed in high school. You always learn something. I did not know that. That's a new one to me. Yeah. And I guess, you know, you see everybody hurdling in college and pros. Right. That these guys just watch those games. And, you know, that honestly, that's the first time I've heard that. I know you were wondering it as it happened. but. Right. I mean, what else could it be? Like, when he threw the flag right at the guy's feet where it happened, you figure that must not be allowed because <laughs> there's no other infraction there. And that's another break for the mountain lions here. Johnson coming around behind. Brown just takes the ball, attempts to run well, forward. Man. He is tackled. Well, that time it was James in there. They're mixing That's and matching James. their guys. Maybe they took him out for his penalty, but I don't know. Again, Brown out. So James gets no three yards. That's, That's his first carry board. of the night. 187 Report to the flag pole for $702. Once again, 180827. 
no winner yet. You're right. The numbers are kind of hard to read. Um, especially this, all the single-digit ones kind of look the same. They're all rounded, and they're yeah. all small. And they're small, right? So yep. there's a penalty snap. Somebody was moving on the yep. snap. That's got to be on, on older dice. So a third and 15 is now going to become a third and oh, 20. No, maybe it's an offside. Okay. He pointed. No, it was on. I didn't see anything. Him, somebody must have lined up offside. It had to be. So we're back at the original line of scrimmage after everything in these last couple plays. And we have a third and 10. I can tell you that it is Jeter at quarterback, and it is James at tailback again. <laughs> is Brown in the game or not? Uh, who's I don't the, see him. I don't know who the receiver is on the far side. We got trips here to the left. James is going to go out to the right. He looks right, turns back left, and hits number eight. He comes across the middle on a He's wide gone. receiver screen, and he is gone. A 49-yard touchdown. Pitch and catch to Touchdown. number eight, Cornell Weems. Cornell Weems. Cornell Weems. 49 yards, touchdown. And that's just, you know, that, that those are the kind of plays that we said that, that Alderdice can make. They have a lot of speed. They're dangerous in, in the open field. Um, you know, and they're going to try to go for two here to get back to a seven-point ball game. Well, opening drive, Alderdice comes up big on third and ten. A little, you know, that used to be the old Rocket Ishmael or the Rocket screen where that wide receiver from the far left just floats behind everybody else going out for a pass, takes the ball, finds the seam, and goes. And it was perfectly executed this time. Again, roll out quick pass and a diving catch. It is good, and that time it is a Johnston. Johnston. Yeah. So 21-14, 7-12 to go. So a great uh, opening drive for Alderdice. And Jeter looks pretty good commanding this offense. Yeah. And you wonder why he wasn't starting in the first place. But then again, he was in and out on that series themselves because they ran the Wildcat a few plays. Right. So uh, Cornell Weems. 49-yard touchdown pass to bring the, uh, the the Dragons back within a, a touchdown, within seven. So we got ourselves a ball game now. So the Mountain Lions will uh, receive the kick. We still got Yost back there, but this time. Tyson Reed. Tyson Reed is on the other side. Is on the opposite side, and Yost is switched from where he normally is. Alderdice comes out and sets the field. Molly Virtue, 5'6", 130-pound senior. She is going to kick off for Alderdice. Now, pre-game, she did not have the leg um, that the other kicker had, so I think you're going to see this come up to the, the second level of receivers. And again, fair catch, fair catch at the 27, 28-yard line. And that is number 26, Chandler Br Brindle. He actually had plenty of room. He just was being careful. <laughs> so they'll and mark the ball at the 28. The at the 27. Or the 27. <laughs> they keep, no, that's a 28. Joe, get your eyes fixed. Yeah, I don't know. In the background, I can hear uh, Mr. Shuda. Um, a Spanish teacher for years and years, retired, but he still does all our play-by-play -play on site. The mountain lines will set up. And we're back to the uh, double wing formation with a split receiver both sides. Wing comes in motion. And when we're in this formation, Alderdice has 10 guys there. And 
They attacked Straup and Steiny pulled it and ran it around the end. And he's going to get seven or eight. Yeah, it was a good job. Seven. And then, you know, they're going to have to do some things, some misdirection, some other things. Because like you said, I mean, Alderdice is saying, hey, we know you run. We're all up here. Do something different. I'd like to see that pass again. If they hit uh, right before half. That was a beautiful pitch and catch. 25-yard touchdown pass to Dokes. And Dokes Riley made it a Ferguson great catch the over ball. the shoulder just as he was going in the end zone with no time on the clock. Offside. A blitz got through the gap before the ball got snapped. He was in there quickly because he cheated. <laughs> But it was close. It was actually pretty close. No, they're saying the mountain lions moved. Oh. Is that something you can decline? Well, no. If the mountain lions moved, the play was blown dead. Had to be blown dead. But the ball should be at the 28, 36, 37. And they're standing at the 31. Yeah, it's a five-yard penalty. So it's either going to be second and eight or third and eight. And, you know, we said very few pre-snap penalties from the Mountain Lions so far this year, and they've had a couple tonight now. In a weird way, that benefited because of how quick the defender came through. Yeah, because they get the down over. Right. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> right. Trips right. They try the draw play, and nobody blocked the big fella. Number 72. George Benjamin George in Benjamin the backfield making the play on Straub. Minus three on the carry. So it now goes to third and 11. So first drive is not starting the way the Mountain Lions wanted to start. Momentum has Lots switched to the Dragon side of the field as Alderdice is a little pumped up. And on that last penalty call, the entire sideline was jumping up and down. So trips left. And the pass goes down the middle and that was thrown into Triple coverage to Dokes. He stared Dokes down on that one. And Dokes was not able That's to come up with the uh, reception, and the Mountain Lions are kicking, and Alderdice is celebrating. So you got Strout back to kick. You got two guys deep. One is about 30 yards off the ball, maybe a little less, 25, and the other is about 35. So James is the up man. This one goes by James and goes to the back man who's going to let it bounce and it will take an Altoona bounce and it'll roll down to about the 35 as Johnston just lets it sit. So my question is because Brown was back on the other one, is Brown healthy? Did When he left the game, was he injured? Yeah, I don't know. I didn't see. Um, Oh, no, he's back in. He's right at the yeah. mid-35. Okay, he's back in. Yeah. I mean, maybe, I mean, you know, they did take him out for a penalty. And they're bringing him out again. So this time, you still have Jeter. And the running back is Marshall, who was the starting running back, but did not really get too many carries early. I think he just got the first play of the game. He got a carry and nothing else. He got three yards. There's a sweep to, to Marshall. He cuts through. He gets a couple yards. He's out to the 39, maybe the 40. So it's going to be a gain of five or four. Looks like four. So four on the play. Second and six. Gain of four. Fourth 50 to go in the third quarter. Mountain Lions holding a 21 to 14 lead. But the momentum is back on Alderdice's side as they've gotten uh, a touchdown and two point conversion. And they just stopped the Mountain Lions on a three and out. 
Handoff again to Marshall. He breaks the corner. He's going down the sideline. And he will turn and run Number into 10. Myers. Hassan Marshall. And he's going to go 20 to 23 yards. He'll go from the, his own 39 to the 39 of the Mountain Lions for a 22-yard gain. 22-yard gain. And the Mountain Lions are falling into that, that trap again. That A team that, you know, you let a few things happen. They get some confidence now. Like you said earlier, you know, you could decidedly see it, uh, the, them down. They put their heads down after the Mountain Lions scored that that touchdown, you know, at the beginning. Uh, this team plays with a lot of emotion, and Alder Dice is riding high right now, and they have a lot of momentum going. Quick handoff up the middle. That time Marshall does not get any yardage. He never really set himself in the backfield either before getting the handoff. He's sort of moving around. So second and ten. Alderdice, I'm assuming at this point inside the 40, would go for it on a fourth down That's attempt if they need it. Three forty-five here left in the third running clock here. Uh, moving pretty quickly. Yeah, they're still looking in the side and they're down to eight. I don't think they're gonna get this they're play off or they're gonna call, call timeout. timeout. Yep. So there's the timeout. Couple big plays by Alterdice here in the third quarter. Uh, the biggest was that 39 yard touchdown. It was a quick screen or that one of those rocket screens. Cornell Weems came across the middle, took the ball from a pass from Jeter and went 49 yards. Uh, just as quick as their opening score, which was James's interception for 49 yards. Mountain Lions came, got the ball back here in the third and was not able to get yardage. Uh, they had one penalty that moved them backwards, but Alderdice uh, was coming through and just had, Mountain Lions had nothing they could uh, to do either up front or throwing. Yeah, I mean, you know, some just some out of character things so far for the Mountain Lions this year. Some pre-snap penalties, a t turnover. They have not turned the ball over. Um, very much this year, you know, would, you know, resulted in that pick six and just some things that they haven't really done. They're not playing poorly. There's just a couple little things that they are kind of, you know, need to be cleaned up that, that are critical uh, to, to their success right now. Trips left. Again, Alderday steps out of the formation for a second and looks at their coach. We're down to eight on the, the, the clock. Snaps the ball with six. Looks for the handoff, but he's going to keep it. He gets to the outside. And nice play on the outside by one of the Mountain Lion defenders. That was Caleb Spriggs. He kept contain on the receiver and did not okay. let Jeter get to the outside. As Jeter tried to get to the outside, he was not able to. It's now third and nine as Jeter just picks up one yard. Yeah, he did a great job Caleb holding his Spriggs ground. Just kind of made... Jeter turn it up so that Ryan, Connor Reimer could get in there and make that tackle. Um, but that looked pretty open there from, from the get-go. So again, this time, Alderdice just flips their inside guys. They have trips to the right. Third and nine. Jeter steps back, looks to throw. He lets one go down the sideline. Nice pass, but he just Pass out through his Coleman. receiver. Coleman was out there. He made a nice break, um, but the, the pass was just too far outside. And they are not going for it. They're going to punt the ball away. Well, the last couple times they did attempt some punts. The one was partially blocked. Manny uh, Miller almost got two of them before that. So we'll see what happens. And they had a snap over their head, but luckily they false started at the same time, so it didn't count. So yeah, they this has been a rather suspect group here for Alderdice. Punter gets the ball. He gets kicks it away. It. It's straight up in the air, gonna be right about the 20. And again, it takes a great Alderdice bounce down to about the 12. So 2.34 to go in the third quarter. Mountain Lions with a 21-14 lead and getting the ball back. Uh, once again, you know, I would like to thank Doug Sipes and the MLTV crew for putting this production on. MLTV Live anytime on YouTube. 
you can pull up the game and watch it, whether it's tonight, tomorrow, or in a couple weeks. Uh, it's something that you can sort of keep forever. And the, the crew bringing the game to you tonight, Caleb Freeze, Noah Freeze, Gabe Ebersaw, Brooke Long, Ben Shank, and Chris Fox. So um, thank you to the crew and to, to Mr. Sipes for everything they do to bring Mountain Line football to you. First play, Steinbugel is just going to take the ball and uh, sweep himself, sort of follow behind uh, the lineman to the right. He's able to pick up. We'll give him three. We out to the 18. Yeah, it looks like the 18 there. So obviously, they're when they're keying on Straup like that, you know, Steinbugel has to has to keep the ball his share of times and. They still got to use Straub here and there, though. And they do try to get the ball to Straub. Same play. He ended up keeping it. He pulled it out and kept it. He pulled it out. So that time, the to get one yard. So we get third and five. So very quickly, the Mountain Lions again, they, they're inside their own 20 on a third and five. One thirty to go in the third quarter. They have not been able to put together anything here in the third quarter. Trips and an end over to the left. Steinbuehl again just takes it, keeps it, and this time he'll at least get some yardage behind Straup, and he gets all the way out to the 26. So he's or 20. Well, we'll give it to 25. So he's going to get a gain of six. And every time they put trips out there, Older Dice only brings two guys out to cover. Um, it, it's it's prime for one of those screens and two guys block. I mean, well, what's happening is the inside guy is the one that's not covered, and the the patterns that the mountain lines have run off the trips. That inside guy seems to always come in towards the middle. So he's running himself into the linebacker. So this time is a double wing. And a pitch around behind. And again, another pass. And, oh, and he, he does it. not make the catch. Um, I will tell you, that was an interesting coverage both ways. There was a little pushing. I'm glad there was no call, actually, because I think you could have called both either the receiver or the defender for the penalty. Yeah, Weems there, he he definitely had somehow the arms were tied up because Heilman, he just used one arm to try to catch it. He had his left arm tied up there kind of somehow and still almost caught it. Um, Thing is, there was two mountain lines running through the middle that didn't have any coverage. <laughs> right, I know. <laughs> the only one that was covered was Weems, and that's where the ball went. That so. was a good was – that, that was Reed again, right? Yes. That was a good pass. It was yeah. right on the money, actually. Second down this time. It does go to – Straup, and he just is tackled at the line of scrimmage. Again, by number 55, he's been there all night long. Watkins is watching Straup everywhere he goes. He makes no tackles on anybody else the entire game, but every time Straup gets the ball, he makes a tackle. He must have just said, you Well, he's spying him. That's, that, that's him. where he's at. And, and the thing is, they're coming low. Is Now we're down to three seconds. We're going to end this third quarter with the Mountain Lions out in front, 21 to 14. Uh but it's a third and eight for the Mountain Lions on their own 28-yard line. So it's kind of, it's, it's just strange, a strange game in a lot of ways, Not and nothing what we expected. Um, the Mountain Lions, who generally can run the ball against just about anybody, uh, all of a sudden can't run the ball, it, hardly at all, and, and it's kind of kind of a strange, strange situation here. Um, but, they have people open. <laughs> I mean, and and well, well, Straub only has two carries in the second half, and both of them have been negative yardage. Um, on the night, he's 13 carries, 39 yards for only three carries uh, each. Um, Steinbugel has eight carries for 29 yards, and again, he has not completed a pass in this quarter. He's now six for 12. Uh, for anywhere from 97 to 111, according to how we roll the fumble <laughs> at the end of that second quarter. And um, I don't think that would go as passing yards, but I don't yeah, know. That, that's, that's why I'm like, the 14-yard yeah. fumble, what do we call it? Uh, I asked Jimmy Lane at halftime from the Altoona Mirror. 
and he said he's going to check with Buck Frank later. Um, we both said it was approximately a 46-yard pass completion and then the, the fumble forward for 14 yards to make it a 60. So third and eight. Mountain Lions in a shotgun. Twins left, twins right. Straup is back to uh, help block. Wide open. Nice pass, yep, and it playing. is caught. Dokes gain a nine, and Dokes gets ten. And what happened on that play, um, more than anything else, is that Brandon Massey, number 21, to um, gain a nine. The defender really just gave him a huge cushion. So that's Dokes' second catch of the night now for 35 yards. Again, Steinbugel just follows Strout down the line of scrimmage. And he's going to pick up four from the 37 to the 41. So the Mountain Lions have made a big change in their run offense. They're now using Strout as the extra blocker or the decoy and having Steiny follow him into the hole or around them. Second down and six. 11 minutes to go in the quarter which is also the game. The receiver's covered, so it's got to be a run play. And it's been a while. They haven't jumped in a while, but he jumped there. He definitely jumped. You lose focus a little bit. So, you know, the interesting match matchup I've been trying to watch is Dylan Ocker, the center, um, against uh, the Grizzly Bear, as they call him. Um, Ben, uh, Benjamin, and even though he's outsized by, what do we want to give Ocker? We're going to say Ocker's right around 195, so he's outsized by 170 pounds. He's, he's containing him. He's not pushing him back, but he's able to sort of keep him in a zone or in an area. Drop on the carry. And yeah. did we get Straup the ball that time? Yeah, we did. And he picked Mario up Watkins first down. Top. Yep. So we're going to give him again a okay, seven. 46 yards now. Three receivers to the left. And there's that wing motion going. And the held off and then a pitch goes to the motion man. And Spriggs takes it around the end, and is he going to pick up three or four? You got, yeah, that, and that, that's, they might need to do that a little more often because, you know, the Grizzly Bear is plugging up the middle, basically, and, and uh, Watkins, number 55, has been there every time Straub's touched the ball up the middle. So. Second and seven. Mountain line set again. Two receivers are on the line of scrimmage, so we know it's going to be a run, and it's a reverse. <laughs> and Andre James, and I'm not sure who the other defender was, number 57, James, just Mario made. Watkins on the tackle. Watkins. Yeah, Watkins is kind of. No game. Must be doing a little Third celebrating down, out there because Dokes got up a little bit upset at him. James just grabs his jersey. He jersey, wasn't going he, anywhere. He, he, I, I was getting ready to say he ragdolled him because yeah. he just grabbed him by the, the jersey and pulled him back. So the Mount Lions, if they can get down into like a fourth and one or two, they may go for it here. Um, one of those, they're very confident in getting a yard or two when they need to. Oh, are they going to look to throw that same sort of pass they threw last time? Ball's off and deep. And again they're bumping and hitting each other and between dokes and johnston uh, dokes looks hurt dokes is having trouble standing up or putting his weight on that left foot so the mountain lions i believe are going to be forced to punt here on fourth and seven and uh, losing dokes would not be something you want to see as he's really having trouble putting weight on that ankle right 8.41 to go. Mountain Lions out in front, 
Mountain Lions have a, a another skill guy. Uh, it's kind of hurt right now. Junior Jameer Hardison. We haven't really seen him all year, but he's a decent athlete. He plays on the basketball team. Um, he has something, I don't know what it is, lower body, some kind of thing that he's been nursing. and um, That's another skilled guy they can get back. Uh, and then the other one that you wonder if they will get back is Jake Adams, who got hurt uh, running track. Right. If he's able to get back, it wouldn't be until week seven or so. So the Mountain Lions are going to be forced to punt ball right at the 50-yard line. That's strange because it was just in you know, Straub takes it, gets the kick away. It's going to take a nice Altoona bounce down to the 13 and fumbled and then basically just pushed out of bounds. So the ball was pushed out of bounds at the 16. And Alderdice will take over. 8.32 in the game. They're down a score. And they're just hanging around, this, these Alderdice Dragons. They're hanging around, hanging around. Mount Lions would really love like to get a score on that last drive to go back up two scores. But you know, here we are now again with a one score ball game. 8.32 left in the game. Kind of a critical drive here for both teams. So we're gonna keep our eyes also as we're, we're calling here. It looks like, uh, is, who's in, Taborn is in on defense yep. for Dokes. Now Taborn's usually back there. Yost is on one side, Taborn. It looks like it's Reed. Reed's playing safety. Ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage. It was thrown for Johnston and uh, bounced into him, so it's now second down. And it looked like the Alderdice quarterback, Jeter, had trouble turning to the right on that rollout. He is a left-handed quarterback, and sometimes that's a tough play to make. Right. He is four for third. Four for 12 on the night. Overall, Alter Dice is four for 15. Three receivers to the right, lone receiver to the left, high. High snap, but it was handed off. And the Mountain Lions just didn't bring him down. He wasn't able to gain yards, but they had him in the backfield. And is that James or is that Brown? Brown, Brown. That's Brown. Loss of one. So it's a quick third and 11 after the incomplete pass and the loss of one on that last play. So we got three lined up again, trips to the right. Usually on third and 10, they line up in this formation. They're gonna run sort of a receiver screen or something straight downfield. And there's the throw straight downfield. Trying to let his receiver run under it. Good defense out there. Sean Betwee in is the nickel. Breaking that play up. Had a big interception last week. Yeah, Betwee's interception last week clinched the game against Williamsport. And this time he just played his position and played defense and was able to knock the ball down. So uh, quickly the Mountain Lions get a three and out and uh, force another punt. The Mountain Lions have been close to getting it all night. Manny Miller must be wondering what's going on because he's been there three or four times, but just is not getting to it. And here comes the penalty. Miller ran in and tried not to knock him over and hold him up. And the, uh, the punter just kept well, trying to fall to the ground. And eventually the, uh, receipt, or the, the official threw it out. Now is it going to just be a five? No, I think it's going to be a five. I don't know if they have that. In That's what I'm thinking now too confusing my uh, different rules. You have different rules for high school, college, right. and pro. So, you know, sometimes you, you're thinking one thing, like that penalty for leap uh, hurdling. We did not know that was a 15-yard uh, a personal foul. Starting to play. Running into the kicker. That's a five-yard penalty from the previous spot. We're going to replay fourth down. All right, so we're going to replay fourth down. Why would they re-kick the ball? I don't know. They had a great kick that rolled for a while. And they're and they're very not very good at kicking in the kicking game. So I, it's wow. Four, fourth and six from the twenty. What Manny's gotta do is instead of going straight, he's gotta cut in front of James. Exactly. He's gotta change his aiming point. Because he's running by it. 
This time he just hangs back. There's the kick again. This time it's fair caught at the Altoona 49 by Reed. Basically, it's about a wash. I think Altoona would have had it on the 48 of Alderdice. Now they have it on their own 49. But 7.20 to go in the game. Mountain Lions up seven. If they can uh, run a little clock off and get a score, um, they could put this game out of reach. That would be what the doctor ordered right there. Nice little four, four or five minute drive, ending in a score. Let's see if the Mountain Lions can get that run game going. Temperature has dropped tonight, both inside and outside the press box. It's, in, <laughs> it's colder in here than it is outside. I, I, I believe that. It says it's 62 out there, and we're probably pushing under 60 here. <laughs> So there, Straub does get the ball. And there he and goes. he's got a hole, and he's going to score, but uh, the not enough time has come off the clock. That's, beggars we'll, can't be choosers. We'll take the score. We'll take the score. 51, 51 yards, yards by Ethan yards. Straub. And I just, it didn't look like Alder Dice was ready. Right. But uh, a, a big hole opened up over that left side. And Straub, that's the first time he's had the ball. Um, since early in the third quarter, and he made the most of it with a 50-yard touchdown run, 51-yard touchdown run. And Altoona now is up 13, looking for more. Palola back to kick. It's up, and... Palillo puts it through again. He has been very consistent this year. I think he missed one kick, maybe the first one against Holiday. And I think it was a bad hole. And, and since then, everything that we've seen in the last two weeks and the other two at Holidaysburg uh, were good. So it's one for one in the field goal department um, and, I, and made every extra point since. So that's all you ask. You know, you don't need that big leg. Now, it's nice if you have that big leg, of course, but boy, inside 35 yards, if you can make everything that you do, then, then, you, then you're solid. You're going to help your team out. So Tuna moves up 28-14. Um, we sort of called what we wanted to see. The only thing is we wanted it to take about four or five minutes, not take 15 seconds. This is about the time we called uh, last week. We said, uh, how about a 12 or 15 yard run? And he broke so a long he one. He broke I a mean. 60, yep. So yeah, so you know, maybe we should try to call this more often. Again, I'm trying to, to look down anywhere for dokes. I can't see him on the sideline right now. I'm hoping that he's standing somewhere near players. I did not see him leave the field. But that would not be good if... Um, I think we got... Uh, we lose him for any time. James and Johnston back for Alderdice. Johnston on the near side, James on the far side. And Johnston's up a little further than normal. See what happens here because Crawford has been kicking some line drives. And that one he kicks a little higher right to James at about the 13, and he fumbles and he picks it up. And there's he, he called a fair catch, maybe. What happened? He called a fair catch. Well, then why'd you blow the whistle? Because he dropped the ball, he didn't catch it. You still have to catch the ball. Yeah, but uh, I don't know about that. Even if you call a fair catch, you have to catch the ball. And that was not by number four. That was number seven. That was James back there. Four was in the middle. I don't understand. Uh, um, I'm not sure. They're going to have to explain that one to me. So Johnson comes across. Quick pitch out to Brown. Brown tries to make a cut forward. He does cut up to about the 20, and we're going to say maybe two yards for Brown. 6.56 to go in the fourth. Altoona out in front, 28-14. They introduce number 72 on the stop. Now Mosley gets up a little gingerly, limping. Robert Brown you got him, up, but he ran off the field, so kind of limping, but. And Chandler Brendel will go in for him. Yeah. 
Screen pass over to the middle to Johnston. He's got room. He's out open. to the 30. He's out to the 37, 38. So Betwee good. was a good one-on-one -on -one tackle. Oh, field John, tackle yeah. by Betwee. Otherwise, Johnston could have gone. He went 17 yards there. Seventeen on the play. I don't know. Dokes is on the bench. He's got a shoe off. I don't know what's going on down there, but they're still looking at him. But a first down for Alderdice here. <clears throat> they hit the ball out to the 38 after that 17-yard uh, pass completion. Again, a little screen pass. And Jeter tries to just set, go deep to number two. He mm -hmm. makes the got catch it. between out to the defenders. William Coleman. And Coleman the makes defenders. the catch there. There were three Back guys out in roots. There was only two defenders. So they were sort of playing between each of them to see where the ball would go. And Coleman made a nice catch. That one's going to go for 22, 32, 42, 43 yards. And that's Coleman's first catch of the night. Reed was just playing center field a little bit late getting there, and Taborn was a little bit late getting there, and just right between the two. Yard completion. First and 10 out 29 for the Dragons. I think it was a 33. I'm sorry, not 43. I overcounted it. About five and a half here running. Left in the ball game. I'll tune up two scores. Jeter lets one go, and there's an open man again, and Dropped he drops it. it. That's Johnston. It was right in his hands. He, he he actually started to make the turn and head towards the end zone. He just didn't have the ball with him. And Chandler Brendel just pummeled Jeter as he got rid of that ball. He got Jeter got up a little slow. He felt that one. So Jeter is now six for 16. Second down. Uh, six for 13 and 129 yards. Mountain Lions are going to get set in there. They're running sort of like a 3-5 three, three or a 5-3. It just depends. Uh, right now they're in the, a true 3-5. And here comes a blitz. Jeter gets the ball away over the middle, and it's picked Tyson off. Reed. Tyson Reed picks off the ball and runs it back to the 22. It was about a... Uh, 13-yard return, but Tyson Reed, he's everywhere. Offense, he throws a touchdown. He makes an interception. Yep, he had the game-saving interception last week in the end zone uh, to seal that Williamsport game up with nine seconds left. That's his second pick of the year. So he, he's had a good uh, early uh, early three first three ball games of the season here so far for the Mount Lions on both sides of the ball. You're right, he, he's everywhere. So with 5.15 to go, Mountain Lions up two scores. Now we'd like to see that long drive. But, Ethan, if you go big again, we're okay with it. Yeah, it'd be okay. <laughs> uh. the Reed seemed to step up from nowhere there. He was playing center field, cut in front of the receiver, took the ball, and got all the way out to the 23. So... Let's see what they can do. There's the handoff to Straup, and there's about seven Dragons right there to tackle him as he gets the ball, and we'll give him a loss of a yard. Alex Yost. Oh, that's Yost. Stopped by Stevon Carrington. And no one I fall didn't notice one. that at first. So minus one on the play there. They have both in there. Yeah, you got two two running backs. Like a pro set. That's interesting. And there's 11 guys in the box right now. Everybody, well, 10. Because the one's man-to-man -man on the outside. And that just seemed to be a broken play. They came hey, through. Yeah, nobody blocked anybody. Nobody. <laughs> I mean, that was right. That was strange. So Steinbugel gets sacked for about a two to three yard loss. I don't know. Is that a loss? Is that a running? Because he never was able to even start to pass. Yeah, I think it was a running play. He kind of went down the line a little bit. And we saw that two running back set, which we haven't seen yet this year. 
So are they coming out in again? No, they're they're back to their normal setup with wings. Yeah, Yost is out and Straup's in there. And there's a quick handoff to Straup, and he just dives forward, gets that three back, and it's going to be fourth and 11. Straup. And I have Straup on that carry gets exactly 100 yards. And 325 to go. I think the Mountain Lions are just going to run the clock down to 26 seconds. Unless Alder Dice calls a timeout, they can run it down to approximately 256 before taking the timeout and then line up to punt. Fourth and 11, fourth and 12. Mountain Lions call timeout with one second on the play clock. 2.57 to go in the game. They call timeout and will come back out to punt, I believe. Yep, they'll come out and punt the ball. Yeah, I was, I thought he said older days at first. Yeah, that was definitely Altoona's timeout. They did exactly what you said. Coach Niedemeyer was in the official's ear on the sideline there. So, you know, we come out, we think Altoona should be a favorite in this ball game. Alderdice gets the quick pick six. They get some confidence. They really feel like they're they're playing decent. You can see the little little step, a little hip, hip in their giddy up, you know, in the in the first half. Mountain Lions had a long drive that kind of stalled that for a while. Then in the second half, Alderdice come out ready to play, drove right down the field, and like <clears throat> you're getting the, you're getting a, 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 a performance out of this Alderdice Dragon team that I'm not sure that we thought was going to happen. So James tries to catch the ball, drops it, picks it up, goes around the end, and he's got a lot of room and blockers in front of him, and I don't think Straup's going to stop him. Uh, uh oh, is that a penalty? That should have been. They did not call There's anything. Oh, out. yes, there is. There's yeah. a flag. Ethan Straub got crushed. Crushed from behind, right. It was. There were four blockers there. They get by the, the defender, and the blocker took out Ethan Straub. That's, but the flag's 10 yards behind that. So yeah. They must have called something else. I don't know how that wasn't a penalty. That's the one bad thing about having your best running back be your punter is on a punt return, he is uh, open for hits. And they're saying that the penalty's on the Mountain Lions, I believe. Alderdice is cheering over there. Two forty to go in the game. Alderdice is running out thinking they're going to do extra point. The officials are still talking. Wow. So the penalties on the Mountain Lions for a face mask. I guess one of the defenders tried to dive from there. I did not see anybody over in that spot. Um, but. Well, Ethan Straub got, I mean, I don't know, unless they called it shoulder to shoulder, it didn't look like it to me, but they got away with that. And this makes it an interesting game now because they're going to go for two. Now they're going to kick. They're going to kick it. But, you know, Terrell James started the scoring with an interception. Now he gets a 53-yard um, punt return. And it's a bad snap. Brown goes back. He's looking to throw. He fumbles the ball. It's rolling around. Mountain Lions just to pick it up. Can't, you can't, can't return do it. Yeah, school, can't right? return in high school. But it stops the try, so it's 20 and to 6. So now they're down 8. Older dice, which is still doable. You know, that's still one score and a two point conversion. Uh, Dragons have two timeouts left. 
you might see an onside kick here. Now, what was interesting about that is in the kicking game, you need to be your seven or eight yards. So most of the time, teams decline the penalty so they can just be their normal spot and do their normal. So they set up at the 10-yard line, yet they move the ball a yard and a half forward. You know, that's a longer snap than what you're used to. You know, that could have, you know, played a part in that, in that uh, bad failed, the yeah, high. That failed try right there. So, I mean, interesting that that would happen. You know, as like when I, I was a kicker in high school, obviously. So when I talk about this stuff, like I do speak from a little bit of experience. We would dec always decline the penalty and leave it at the three yard line, set up at the 10 to keep everything normal. Because that's what you practice same. every day. Right, so you, why change that? You don't want to change it. The, the, right. That yardage means nothing. Yeah, you, you practice a seven yard snap every single time. Exactly. So now you go to a eight and a half yard snap and center puts a little extra something on it. It goes a little angle higher. So we'll see if we have an onside kick attempt here. Mountain Lions believe it's going to be an onside kick. They have kick. everybody up, don't they? They have everybody up. And, one. <laughs> and, and everybody's number is like zero to 20. Right. 22, 24. You got the, the two running backs to the outside. Now Straup's running right into the middle. Or is he switching sides with you? He's going over with Yost. You got Steinbuehl. You got your starting quarterback right at the 50. Yep. Everybody up. Sean Betby is back around the 20. Otter Dice is five each way. Comes running up to the ball. There's the onside kick, and it goes off a mountain line right to Alder Dice. It looks like it hit Yost. Right, I mean, it was right to him. He just did not catch the ball. It hit Yost and it is recovered by Alter Dice. It looks like it was recovered by number eight. And he said, again, that's Weems. So 240 to go. And the Mountain Lions are back on defense after the punt return and then the, the onside kick. And that wasn't even an onside kick. like. It was a, a line, line drive. drive. <laughs> if he had just not touched it, it would have went out of bounds. I mean. Yeah, well, it was right at him. It was hard right. to get out of the way. Ay, ay, ay. Interesting. It wasn't your normal bounce, bounce, bounce high in the air right. onside kick. It was a legitimate onside kick. So now the Mountain Lions have to come up with a play here and a stop. 240 left. Dragons have both timeouts, down eight. Trips left on the short side of the field. And there's the screen over the middle. It is caught by Brown. Brown's, uh, there's a penalty flag, right? Something fly, or was that just me? Oh, no. Robert Brown, Jeter Brown gets a reception. But Jeter got, is that Jeter? Jeter's hurt. He got hit hard and he's down. So it's a gain of 15, but Jeter is now gonna be out. At least for this play. And that was, they take a timeout. And that was Brown, well, He's not really getting up, so I don't think he's going to be able to play. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't look good. For I, him. I, I didn't mean it in that frame, but yeah, I don't, I don't see him coming right back in. Or, oh man, I say that, and all of a sudden he jumps up. Well, he has to come out at least for this play for sure. And like I said, unless they call a timeout, which they won't want to waste their timeout. They already have Parker back in. So it is now first down and 10 at the 36. So a game that the Mount Lions have pretty much been in control of since that opening pick six. Now is kind of in the balance here with the running clock 220 left. Parker now goes back. He'll roll to the right. He's looking to just throw into the flats. Dropped. And it's dropped in a penalty. Now, after the fact, we decide we're going to call a penalty. That's that's nice. The guy was down. He come in. Spriggs come in and make, make, tries to make a hit. 
They're talking it over, but it, in my mind, it's going to be 15 yards on the mountain lines. It's going to take it down at the 21. Targeting. Like you're supposed to stop. Like I don't know about that. Uh, I'm I'm sorry. That's. I mean I I they, the he, they did bump helmets. He dropped the ball dropped a split ball. second before <laughs> the guy tackled him. Like are you kidding me? He, he had the ball in his hand. Like I get what we're trying to do, but like that's ridiculous. There's the, you can't stop like when you're trying to attack a ball carrier. So first down at the 21. Again, Parker back. Oh, no. Jeter's back in. Quick pass, and it bounces in front of Eugene, Eugene Hall. Hall. So we got second and ten. That was Parker back in the game. So Jeter, yeah, Jeter's back in the game. He looked like he was not coming back, but he made it back. Mount Lions had like eight guys back in coverage there. I'll tell you what, uh, Miller, Yingling, and Riccio, I don't know if they've subbed out yet today. Right. They've been in pretty much every offensive play or defensive play for the Mountain Lions. You have a blitz coming from the outside. And it's a pick. Intercepted. And down the sideline. Oh, he stepped out. Step Yost out. made a great interception. Yost shows some hands there because he didn't show very good hands on the onside kick. Uh, but he showed great hands there. He made up for that. And Mount Lions get the ball back. Again, that onside kick was a, a hard line drive. So I don't, you know, there, there's nothing there. But he made a great break on the ball there to step in front of the receiver and, and, and make a fingertip interception and then bring the ball in and start going up the sideline a few yards. So two timeouts for Alderdice, two for the Mountain Lions, 159 on the clock. Mountain Lions basically are going to need probably one first down, maybe a second. Yeah, it's eight point lead with a minute 59 left. You get a first down or two and you're in good shape. You know Seal they're running up. it. They only have one guy out on two over here as Parker's cheating in. Steinbugel takes the ball, turns and starts running forward. He'll get up to about the 20, 23. So he'll get a gain of four. The clock is running. Nope, it's timeout. They might put a couple seconds back on there. Timeout. Motor dice. That's their second of the half. Clock operator, please reset the full clock to 150. 150. They're yeah, putting 150. two seconds back on the clock. Oh, not two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> that happened before. Didn't that has Penn State and Michigan quite a few years ago now. Come back to haunt Penn State, but that's a whole other story. So the Mountain Lions here. Um, First down would be awesome, but at the very least, use up their timeouts. Don't turn the ball over. Give, you, you can, you'll give them the ball back with just under a minute at worst case scenario. Punt the ball away. Well, well that is a question. You only got six yards. If you go 2-2 two, two and two, game's over. Do you, do you go for a fourth and two at your own end? Oh, that would be gutsy. Who was that in the pros a couple years ago? Was that the, the, the Colts? That tried that against New England? Yeah, I think it was. And uh, what you call it, uh, Peyton Manning didn't make it. Missed by a yard. Or no, it was Brady that didn't make it. It was New England that went for the, the one yard and fourth down. So the Twins again, this time to the right. Yeah, Parker's cheating way inside. He wasn't going to cover anybody before. Now he's lining up actually right behind the big man. Benjamin. They got two defenders outside, nine others in the box. Straub gets the ball and then actually gets pushed ahead for another two to three yards. So it's now going to be third and three. That's kind of doable. That's no, that was big. That they're, fall they're forward. They're not marking there. it at the 26. They're going to mark it at the 25. 
That's her last yeah. time out of the half. So you still got Since a third three, and, Mario three and a half. Watching. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's doable though. That's doable. Well, this basically this will be the game. If they can pick up a four yard gain, then there's gonna be no time left. They can they can go into victory formation and win the game. They can kneel, right. So they get the first down, it's pretty much game over. If they don't get the first down, they'll run down. They'll be four, the time of this play plus 40 seconds. It'll take it down to around a minute. They'll probably call timeout. Then they'll punt the ball away. Alderdice will get the ball back with 50 some seconds, no timeouts left. So do you and go? We, did we see this movie last week or what? <laughs> do you go conservative or not? Because here's my question Parker is your containment on this side of the field. Parker is now playing right behind the center. If you fake the handoff to Straub and either bring your quarterback around or you bring your wingman with your quarterback and get that pitch, the entire left side of the field is wide open. Oh, they left somebody out on the numbers. Look at this. Mountain Lions left a receiver out on the numbers, and then finally it is picked up. You have another receiver out here. Parker does not want to come out and cover him. He wants to cheat in. He's going to split the difference, but he's going to run towards the line of scrimmage. And then Steinbugel comes right down the line, dives forward. He ends up under short. It's fourth and one. Fourth and less than one. What do you do? What do you, right you have now, to punt it. Well, I'm going to go 40 seconds. I'm going to run the clock. Right. Down to the 40 oh, seconds. The We're going to call, call time out again with one second. So it's going to be with about 55 to go. Are they going to line up and fake it? To try and to draw see them to off. Draw them off because you draw them off, the game's over too. So fourth and less than a yard. And they jumped. They jumped, but they didn't call it. The, the end just jumped, went across the line of scrimmage, and came back. That was James. And I don't understand. Once you cross. And he took the ball, snapped it, and it looks like. Mount got Lions got down. it, first down. That's the game. Game's over. That's a gutsy call right there. Well, I think at that point they thought they weren't going to snap it. They weren't going to do anything. And by the way, you, in high school, you cannot cross the neutral zone and get back. So he crossed. I mean, there's no way. I don't understand that. But it doesn't matter. Mount Lions are going to get the win. It's victory formation from here. Mount Lions will start their season 3-0 and next week. They will start mid-pen play against Central Dolphin East. I believe they're coming here. Central Dolphin East comes here. Um, Alder Dice goes 1-2. and two. If they got a forfeit last week, there's a little debate on that, whether they got a forfeit or not, because it was a COVID game that was canceled. But, um, Mount Lions will start 3-0 and in their non-conference, start their conference play next week. Uh, fairly confident. I mean... This wasn't their best All performance right, tonight, but it was good enough to get the W. And uh, they're 3-0, and and they have the taste of victory. And that's kind of very important when it comes to uh, uh, playing some of these conference games. You know, they have some confidence, and they haven't had that in the past. You know, they play these games. They're not, not a confident bunch. This is kind of a confident bunch coming off a District 6 championship last year, starting out 3-0. and They have some confidence. We'll see how it plays out in the conference games. Well, one thing, this was not like one of the well-played, clean games. It was a sloppy game uh, for everybody. Our team, um, Alderdice, the officials. Uh, it wasn't a well-played game overall. The Mountain Lions did what they needed to. They had two big interceptions at the end. Uh, Yost's interception, and then before that, Tyson Reed stepped in front. Both of them were red zone interceptions that kept Alderdice from getting uh, on the scoreboard. Um, so the Mountain Lions, both teams go to their their league play next week. Mountain Lions on a 3-0 and high. And Alderdice, as you said, either 1-2 and or 0-2 and based on last week. But they have probably their biggest game of the year next year uh, or next week against Westinghouse. So um, at the famous Couples Stadium on the south side. <laughs> been there many a time. Probably on a, I think it's on a Thursday even, too. So... Um, so just quickly to go through, Alderdice opened the scoring with a 49-yard interception. Uh, Terrell James takes the, the, the screen pass and goes the other way 
for a 6-0 lead. The Mountain Lions showed a little razzle-dazzle, and Ethan Hellman scored an eight-yard touchdown pass from Tyson Reed um, on a sort of wing reverse or a wing sweep. Palilla kick made it 7-6. Aiden Steinbugel uh, did another up-the-middle run just before half. Uh, one yard put out to now front, then 14 to six. Mountain Lions played some very good defense in that last minute, came up with the ball, and Dokes had a 25 yard touchdown pass from Steinbugel with four seconds left in the half to go up 21 six. Second half, the third quarter started out all alter dice as they got the ball, and on a receiver screen, uh, Weem went for 49 yards on a pass from Jeter, and then uh, Jeter threw to Johnston for the two to close within 21 14. But the Mountain Lions came back. Ethan Straub on a 51-yard run up the middle, his biggest play, and uh, the Mountain Lions' biggest play of the night. Uh, Palillo with the kick, 28-14. Alderdice scores again on a James punt return um, of 53 yards. And then the Mountain Lions, two interceptions to seal it. And that's the way it ends tonight. Um, again, I'd like to thank the MLTV crew for putting on the MLTV live games on YouTube. Uh, the Mountain Lion fans and team appreciate it. Uh, the crew tonight is Caleb Freeze, Noah Freeze, Gabe Ebersaw, Brooke Long, Ben Shank, Chris Fox, and of course, Doug Sipes. Uh, so from Mansion Park tonight, Mountain Lions win 28 to 20 against Alterdice. They start the year 3-0. I'm Jim Abbott along with Chris Strawmeyer. Thank you, and we'll see you next week against Central Dauphin East. Have a good evening, everybody.